Hey everybody, welcome to the GMG Review. Today we're taking a look at Heroscape Age of Annihilation, the master set from Avalon Hill, Renegade Limited, uh, and Hasbro. Who remembers Heroscape? I certainly do. This is a... Man, this is a blast from the past. Um, this was one of the sort of like primary pre-painted early 2000s entries into miniature wargaming, aimed at putting it on a lower sort of like creative shelf um, or effort shelf for people where your miniatures basically came pre-assembled, pre-painted, um, and you had a 45 to 90 minute play experience for people that weren't as creatively inclined. So they wanted to have more of like a bespoke experience out of the box. Um, and the Hasbro Pulse uh, master set basically is a two player starter set for playing through the battle of all time. It's both fantasy and science fiction, so it's sort of like a science fantasy thing. It feels a little bit um, magisterium. What was that called? Uh, oh, shoot. The James McAvoy show. <laughs> uh, the Battle of All Time. Pieces but a dream in the remote palette of Valhalla. The mighty Valkyrie generals lead warring factions into a new age of battle. The Valkyries summon their hardened heroes and new champions from distant worlds into the fight. Old alliances have fallen and new ones will form. The fate of Valhalla will be won through the flames of war. Join warriors from across time and space as they battle in Heroescape, Age of Annihilation. Choose your scenario, build your battlefield, select your army, and fight to win. So, very simple unit construction, lots of beautiful miniatures right out of the box uh, that come pre-assembled and pre-painted. So this edition um, has both the terrain and the miniatures. So you're gonna have unit cards for all these guys, all of your oh, snap together terrain tiles, as well as 3D terrain pillars to put on here. Your rule book, your scenario book, and all of your unit cards come in the box. There's your rule book and scenario book, all your unit cards, and then a massive, heavy amount of terrain tiles. So all of these hex tiles, these are actually super popular as well uh, with Battletech players. They snap together to form your battlefield, and they are already out of the box plastic with green paint on them. So you have your like terrain sets. So you can see they come multiple colors, gray for mountainous terrain, green for grass terrain. Uh, and there is a ton of expansions for the train sets themselves to add more features and stuff afterwards. So game contents, uh, Zenithrax the Vine Weaver, <laughs> which is your big dragony man right here. Uh, you get Dorm Bulkhead Brawler, which is your dwarf uh, from the Age of Annihilation. We've got Knight Ire Jandar Knight Irene, uh, Mezorax the Kyrie Warrior, Ratchock, the Steward of Death, who's kind of like a, a crazy sort of like Sir Nunos model. Uh, Lovia Takar, the Kyrie Warrior. Raylan, the Kyrie Warrior. Admiral EJ1M. It's kind of like a, almost a, oh geez, what would you call it? Da, 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 General Grievous sort of type. Frostlaw Paladins, which is your unit of bears. Exiles of the Sundered Sea, which is your unit of space pirates. And then Knaves of the Silver Scimitar, which is your... Um, I guess like almost alien crew uh, for your different factions. And then you get four in each of those. You get 24 hexes of six grass and two rock individuals, uh, some seven hex, four grass, two rock, and two sand, three hex, two grass, one rock, one sand, two hex, 16 two hexes that are six grass, anyway, a whole bunch of stuff, two wall ruin pieces, four small thin wall pieces, eight single wall connectors. So basically you put these together and then you put bases on them to make your individual walls and they go together super duper quick, but they're all bagged up individually. So just to show you how these work, these are the threes. These are the individuals, including the water pieces. You have some water train too. And the water train is actually done in like a clear resin, which is nice. So you have like a really cool sort of like sparkly effect on it for the water. Um, and then, yeah, so the pillars will sit onto these base pieces, which then sit on top of, and you can sort of shape the walls how you want, right? So you have these, which are the base pieces. They connect to oops, the bottom pieces right here. It's these little base connectors and then these towers. So each one basically links up so that you can make your walls and have some 3D train elements on top of your stuff. So these would go like this as your base pillar, and then these long wall pillars will then sit in between them, right? So these are the short wall pillars. They're going between like that. The long wall pillars would go in between like this. And you can link these together to make as many as you want, and then they just sit on top of 
the hexes to like hold them together. Super easy, quick to do, and makes putting together your battlefield relatively painless. So let's take a look at some more of the small miniatures on level two here. The paint jobs aren't terrible, I'll be honest. I always associated pre-painted miniatures with like, I don't know, I'm a miniature painting guy, right? So a, a level of almost like laziness, but these are pretty great. I'll be honest, they're not bad at all. There's a, a mild amount of assembly, like for the dragon, his weird tentacle back tail goes down here and then his um, wings are another level. So like this just snaps on. And then his giant wing set goes here and he's a pretty impressive miniature. What's nice is by having these in separate pieces, they were able to color them separately. So none of the colors bleed, right? The wings are completely separate color from the rest of the miniature. And you get like a nice gradation of tones on it too. It's not, it is not bad for being toyetic, right? Like it, it feels a bit like a toy. The actual like paint job is not terrible. Um, I do love these space pirates because they have a real, uh, a Davy Jones from the, whatchamacallit, Davy Jones from um, Pirates of the Caribbean kind of feel to them. And the bears are just fun. Now, what is really great about these miniatures is they're, they're base coated. So they have solid block, block colors on them, usually over top of a base tone. That's actually the color of the plastic itself. So like the bears here, the plastic itself is kind of a gray. It's been sprayed with the beige for the fur and then hand painted with the metallics with like a very minor amount of washes, dry brushes. Uh, you can actually bring these paint jobs. Like they're just base kind of, they're, they're, the, the basic work's been done, but with some washing and dry brushing, you could really like zhuzh these up a bit and make a nice, a nice finish to them. And they're perfectly serviceable the way they are. And again, they're not aimed at painters. They're aimed at people that want to just pull these out of the box and play. And when you compare them to normal board game pieces, they're fantastic. I like the General Grievous dude with his purple cape and his multiple pistol arms. He just doesn't have lightsabers because, you know, legally distinct General Grievous. And then the weird horned god here who's like a tree with a kind of pagan mask uh, and we get our big bear and then the four little bears big ice bear he's kind of i would say of all the sculpts in here he's the worst because you can see that he was he was sculpted 2d and that that he has a 90s feel to him right because he was flat cast and then pulled into the mold like this so he's just kind of hunchbacked a little bit but he's not terrible he's definitely not great like that shoulders in kind of the wrong spot but other than that he's not terrible or she i'm, I'm not sure what the bear is uh, it's a bear um and then yeah the rest of our space pirates and characters are on this side here so like i said definitely a a, a a fine amount of like work you know painting wise for something that's coming out pre-painted and you get an absolute ton of the terrain uh you get your little unit activation markers here the numbers you can keep things numbered Moon counters uh, and your glyphs for all your spells and stuff. Um, it uses a basic uh, attack defense profile. So if you've never played Heroescape before, the core mechanic is opposing dice pools with blocks being two out of six chances and hits being three out of six with a single blank, right? So they use a, a block attack defense dice and then you get a d20 for your various tests. So for instance, on your stat cards, you might have powers that you need to trigger and activate. You'll use the d20 to activate those. The actual attacks will be something else. So move stat line, like your core stat block, move five, so five hexes. Range one for their attacks. Attack three dice, defense two dice. So they throw three dice in attack, two dice in defense when they try to block. There's 65 points for them. So these are the thing of reavers. They got some special rules. Um, they've got varied, unique squad, pirate, wild, medium. So the captain's orders before taking a turn with the knaves of the silver scimitar, you may first take a turn with your chosen pirate or hero or captain. So you could go with them and then choose, for instance, Admiral EJ1M. I believe he's a pirate. Yeah. Uh, boarding pass. Admiral's orders. After rolling for initiative, you may choose uh, move any order markers from this card onto any of your pirate or captain army cards because he's an admiral. Oh no, he's an admiral. Sorry which means someone else is a pirate here probably. Uh, she's a unique, who's a pirate? Who's got pirate here? Somebody must have pirate. But you jot our prime, do you have pirate? No, unique champion, he's an ursine. Uh, bulkhead breacher, pirate, there we go. So yeah, the, the space pirate can go. Yeah, the dorm, the bulkhead brawler, he's got pirates. He'd be able to go first with his chain ax and charge. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a nice, simple, easy to understand course stat line. Uh, as it's made by Avalon Hill, it is reminiscent uh, of, and it's funny enough, it's reminiscent of Hero Quest, almost more than anything with the dice mechanic and stuff like that, which is, of course, they're the same people that are currently making Hero Quest. 
So it makes sense that core mechanics been carried over. Um, the point values are easy to understand. The actual like like sculpting and stuff um, is uh, pretty pretty reminiscent of the old version of this game. So they've got like big proportions, giant hands, big weapons and stuff. Uh, and then you've got your scenario. So your scenario list is multiple ways to play. And there's master game, which is like the full court, like the full game, and then the basic game. So the basic game is like, you know, a, a simple, just use the rules on the cards, don't use all the special rules. Uh, and here's some setups for playing your map. Every time you do it, you get a different level. So these are the map levels that you play in the Hashiba Basin, scenarios one, two, and three. These are all the basic ones. So you play these three scenarios. These are the different places you can play them as you stack things up. So like level one is these pieces of map, uh, repeat level five for level six. Scenario one, defend the dam, basic game. Lay out the map like so, it goes to pass, master game. So in these, like for instance, each player drafts a 300 point army. One player places their figures in the brown starting zone, then places them in the navy starting zone. Place four glyphs uh, symbols side up uh, where shown in the map, and then place walls where shown in the map. Victory, the player who collects two glyphs and presents one to each altar wins. So basically there's walls and altars. If you take it to the altar, then you win the game. Um, if neither one uh, succeeds in doing it or all their figures are destroyed before the end of round seven, they both lose and the ghost of Hashiba claim the night for themselves. And so you're gonna get the different maps. These are the different ways of setting up your maps, the different levels. And it gets bigger the higher you go, right? So like you put the basic amount down and then you build on top of it to make your different 3D maps. And each of the maps has like Howling Pass has scenarios four and five, six and seven are in Vile Cove. Hashiba Basin's one, two, and three, the basic ones with one master one, the table shatters. Uh, and then the core scenario book, map one, the shattered table. This is just the one for playing like the, 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 the learn your game game. And that's it. And there are tons of expansions for this, which I'll go through in the next couple of weeks. Um, but this is a return to HeroQuest. If you are looking for a game that does not require a lot of prep, so like you just want to rip the box and go, this game, while probably more expensive than a lot of games in the market for a similar amount of miniatures, removes all of the time to play. So if you're trying to find something that's on a low shelf, sort of like um, prep-wise for a younger audience, like if you're trying to get someone in, like they say here, the ages 14 plus, but I would say you go as low as 10, uh, into playing their first tabletop war game, this is a great immersive sort of like bespoke experience for them to be able to handle. I would say 14 plus handled on their own, with an experienced war gamer or like tabletop gamer, or even board gamer, you could go as young as 10, I would say, as long as they're comfortable with reading so they can read the text on the cards. I would say this is a great first experience when it comes to accessibility. And I'm big on accessibility right now, so I'm excited to see HeroScape come back and be supported by Hasbro because I do think that it's one of those games that while it, it didn't necessarily survive in its period and like because there were so many competitors out it's kind of alone right now in the pre-painted war game market and something like this needed to come back so i'm glad that this completed experience out of the box while it is relatively spendy as initial outlay it has the ingredients needed to capture i think an audience who isn't used to putting into a whole, like a whole bunch of work to get to play the game so the loop gets completed relatively easily and you get to the fun part, right? The Christmas morning test happens quickly. So just like Hero Quest, also from Avalon Hill and um, Hasbro, this is one of those games that you can be playing inside 15, 20 minutes once you open the box. And it's a game I'm gonna be playing with the kids because again, there's not, it's immersive, it's ready to go. It's a, it's a, it's a sort of like out of the box experience. I would put this up there with things like Necro Molds, um, you know, like the X-Wing starter from 2012 uh, and other various sort of like low entry level starters bit higher price point but you get a ton of stuff in the box and i would say that the amount of material in the box is commensurate to the the price tag experientially so there you go the battle was it the master set uh age of annihilation from hasbro and avalon hill uh, a return of heroescape so big thanks to them sending along the complimentary review copy and for you guys for watching until next time ash have a gaming